Yeah, it, it's it's been amazing to see your progress over the last few years. Um, I think last time we really like got into the trenches was, you know, I think you're making like low six figures, like 20k, maybe 30k. Um, run me back just through that time, like what you were doing. Because I remember you were still running ads, but you were still like doing all the work, like messaging people every single day. So run me just through back in that period before you started getting into like Instagram. Yeah, so I think this was around uh, 2019, I want to say, end of 2019, probably 2020. I um, I had realized that my passion, uh, so kind of just to back up a little bit, I began as an Amazon seller in 2015 after my restaurant burned down. And um, and I wanted to, you know, kind of get out of debt. I wanted to uh, uh, gain the respect of my father because I had lost all of his money in, in, in a business venture. And, um, and so started researching online and Amazon was just the thing that I wanted to do. Um, after doing it for about three years and actually succeeding and, and, and having a multi seven figure business there, I realized that, um, I was making the kind of money that I could, you know, ne- that I never dreamed of, but I, there, there was no passion in, in the whole thing. Right. And, uh, around that same time, I had been helping a couple of friends that were interested in what I was doing, which is when I came about the whole concept of consulting and teaching other people, kind of transferring that skill to someone else. Cause I didn't even know that that was a thing. And, uh, and once they got, they started getting results, I realized that I now had something that other people, you know, were seeking and that I al- almost felt like I had a moral obligation to teach them. So I started looking into the, the, the guru industry and, and kind of the, the online industry and, and realized that there was a bunch of, um, just a, a bunch of, I don't want to call them scams, but people that, that didn't have the best interest of the end user at heart, right? It was just, I'm here to make money at all costs. It doesn't matter whether you get the result or not. It's just about me, right? And uh, and I felt like I, I wanted to kind of change that around a little bit. So I um, I launched the course. It was uh, three ninety nine at the end at the, at that time. That was late 2018, 2019. and uh, and it just went nowhere. You know, and it was the cheapest course in the Amazon industry. Um, at I was probably one of the only Amazon like true Amazon sellers selling an uh, an Amazon course, and uh, it just went nowhere. And, um, and that's when I realized that, okay, I know how to do the thing, but I now need to know how to sell the thing, right? Cause just knowing how to do the thing doesn't really get you anywhere. And so I started, uh, following Ty Lopez and Russell Brunson, you know, f- copying their, like, uh, their, um, their automated webinar funnels and all that stuff. And that didn't do anything. Uh, and then I found Sam Ovens in uh, February of 2019. I enrolled in this program and, um, and I was looking for someone to teach me automated webinars, but his thing was a VSL, call funnel. I had never picked up the phone. I had never sold anything in my life. And, uh, and that's when I you know, I realized, okay, I need to follow scripts and do all this. So around that time, we, we scaled to about 20, 30K uh, a month, all organic. This is me DMing people, getting them in the DMs, getting on the phone with them, closing them, fulfilling on the service, and I still had a multi seven figure biz- Amazon business that I was running. So I was juggling both working probably 18, 19 hours a day. And I realized that just wasn't sustainable. So that's when I joined Up Level, which was Sam Oven's next program, which was about Facebook ads and running ads. And that was cool because now I could back up from organic, focus on ads. I can shoot one ad and, and that could go on, you know, to making hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that was cool. Right. And that's when I met you. And then we started, you know, working together and and just kind of having you helping me like uh, optimize my Facebook ads and scaling those. And we scaled to about I think I want to say about 150 K a month or so in revenue uh, was about a two two X ROI. So I was spending about 50, 60 K a month generating about 100, 150 K a month. But obviously, as many of us know, Facebook ads, you know, when they woke up, bam, gone, nothing, no business. Um, so it started from ad accounts being shut down, business manager being shut down, the actual user being shut down. And that was like a battle for four months and revenue was just up and down. I still had a seven figure Amazon business that I needed to operate. And this was becoming a burden more, more than a passion, right? Cause I started coaching as a passion. It started becoming as a burden and I was almost like done just trying to get out of it. Um, brought in a, a, an agency to do YouTube ads that didn't work out. And then that's when I, you know, someone told me, Hey man, there's this thing called influencer marketing on Instagram. Have you looked at it? Um, this was probably about 2020, mid 2020. 
And that's when I realized that there is this whole new thing that people don't even know about, got into that, and then that's kind of helped us you know, grow uh, a ton over the last couple of years. Awesome, yeah. It's, it's quite interesting because while you were running ads, you were still doing outreach. Is that correct? Like you were still- For the beginning, yes. Yeah, for the beginning, yeah, it was. Yeah, like, because a lot, because pretty much 95% of clients I've worked with, they would never do that, right? Like, well, as soon as the ads are on, they'll never touch a message again. But I noticed with you, for example, like you were still messaging people even though ads were running. Like, was that intentional? Or like, did you find that an important thing to do? Well, I mean, the consulting business had not taken off yet, you know? And, and, and although I personally, as a person, had money in the bank, but that business didn't have money in the bank, and for me to spend money on ads, I needed cash flow coming in. And so I realized that the ads game was kind of a little bit of a longer game. It was going to take a little longer to kind of take off. And so um, I knew that I needed some traction. And I also needed to know that I needed to have my messaging dialed in. I need to have my funnel because I did not, when I was doing outreach, I wasn't doing my funnel, right? I didn't have that going. Um, it was just organic. I message them, they get on, you know, I, I schedule them manual into my calendar. I get on the call with them. And so the, the ads, it was going to take some time. And for me to spend 10, 20, 30 grand before I can make them profitable, I knew if I didn't have another machine producing me that cash flow, I was going to be, I was going to back out of ads soon before I actually have some traction. And I think that's also another issue that a lot of people do is that they'll spend a thousand, they'll spend $2,000 on ads. Oh, it doesn't work they pull out. Well, you kind of need to keep going a little bit longer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it takes some time before you can see a result. Like you, even with you, like, you know, you, you have to build up momentum to start getting strategy sessions coming in every single day. And at some point, you know, you're getting so many that because of all the momentum you built beforehand. Right. Um, but it's quite interesting because you moved from ads to purely, I wouldn't say organic, but leveraged organic you know paying influences but also having your just from instagram profile so what was that switch like like how did you really realize like like how did you start it and then when did you see it like become profitable and then doubling down on it as your main source after i joined uh sam sam oven's uh quantum mastermind he um he told me to fire the agency and then uh, he said, you know, you just got to figure it out. You know, you got to figure it out yourself, hire in-house, and then try to do that yourself. And so I realized that YouTube wasn't working, but that was the only thing that was producing me cash flow at that time. But it wasn't even profitable. And so um, I had also kind of started doing shout outs a little bit on Instagram for like brief moments, but it wasn't getting traction. Um, and my thing was, I'm going to fire the agency. I'm going to learn how to do... YouTube ads, which is when I uh, got into Alex Becker's course, and I'm just going to run it myself. And then I'm going to completely come off of social media because at that time I was all over social media. I was posting like 20 times a day on Twitter, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, everywhere, on story. I mean, I was taking it probably about four or five hours a day just posting. And, um, and it was just the, that content machine. It was just, it was very time consuming. So I realized that if I can figure out ads, I wouldn't need to be such like so active on social media. Instead, I can focus on delivering my product. Again, I still had a multi seven figure Amazon business that I was now still running. And so that was also taking a lot of my time. Um, but I just couldn't get YouTube ads to work. And one of the pages that I was um, promoting on, on Instagram reached out and was like, hey man, I see what you're doing. I like what you're about. Um, you're a little different than, than anyone else online, but what you're doing sucks. You know, I think I can do a better job, you know, than you pay me some money. Let me run your Instagram page for you. And I was like, and this, I think it was, this was like September, October of 2020. I was like, look, you guys got a, mo a week or a month to make this happen. And I think like first month we didn't do anything. Second month we did. Okay. I think it was like October, November, we did like 10 K in profits. I was like, okay, this is something. December, we did like 20K in profits. Like, I think we did like 50,000 in revenue, 20K in profits. And I was like, all right, that's, you know, 30, 40% uh, net. That's not bad. And then I was like, all right, we'll go another month. And it was just like, it's month by month. Like, we had no contract, it was month by month. January of 2021, 
we did 152,000, uh, 6x ROI, or 4, four 5x, between 4 to 6x ROI. And that's when I realized there was something there, right? And then from there, until now, it was just me. I had brought on one sales rep. Um, and that's when I realized, okay, we're scaling. And that's when we started adding sales reps, adding more in the marketing team, adding more in the coaching team, and actually now became a company instead of just a, a side hustle, you know? Yeah, exactly. So when you said you hired someone, was that just for your Instagram organic or also to run your shout outs? So it was the same, you know, their, their thing was, I'm going to run your Instagram page, but I told them that my focus is influencer marketing. But what we've realized over the last couple of years that we've been doing this is that um, the, 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 the Instagram strategy, at least, um, yes, it is dependent heavily on like influencers that are promoting you, but it's very much independent on the content, how good the content is. Is it viral? Is it converting? Is it value-based? What is it, right? Because literally we will have one day where we will have four, we have 300 to 400 pages promoting us almost every day, right? Almost every day. We will have one day where we will produce 120 calls. One day we'll produce 70 calls. The only difference is the content that we put out on our page. And also that same content we use to send to our influencers so that way they can post it on their pages to drive more traffic. So the better the content, the more followers we get, the better content, the more people will hit the link in bio and, and book a call. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, and I, I think that it works very well for you as well is because you have a, a broad like B2C offer, which kind mm. of appeals to anyone. So you can really go kind of mass market on Instagram. Do you okay. think this... How well does this work for B2C? But then also, is this something you think could work for B2B or not? You know, I've been asked that question. I don't know. I've helped a couple of people, um, you know, with their B2C offers. I have yet to see someone try this for B2B. Um, so I haven't seen someone try and fail. I just haven't seen someone try. So I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Um, it might be... Because you have to ask yourself, the pages that we're going after is are all in the entrepreneur you know, niche, right? And so you have to ask yourself, um, the, where, where are your customers, like where are they hanging out, right? Where are they, like what are they doing? Like I know the very first things that you learn uh, with Sam Ovens, uh, if, if yeah, I remember you, you were in his program, uh, is like where is, like where do your, your customers hang out. What are the the articles they're reading? What are the websites they're visiting? What are the tools they're using? You know, what are the you know what kind of social media? Which platforms are they are they on every day? And if you know those things, then you'll be able to determine whether or not what I do works for B two B. You know, I feel like it's better suited for B two C, just because you know the everyday person that's trying to get out of their job and stuff like that are following the pages that are posting motivational stuff and all that stuff and, 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 and getting up on that, you know? I don't know if an entrepreneur that's already got a successful business is necessarily looking at that stuff every day. Like for me, I never look at Instagram. The only time if I ever look at Instagram is once a day probably uh, in the morning when I post stories um, or if I just want to look at how our content is, op, you know, is performing. Outside of that, I don't really follow anyone, you know? I'll, I'll go some, sometimes and like look at someone's stuff if someone sends me a link to like Alex Harmozy stuff, you know, Dan Pena, uh, this guy, that guy, you know, but outside of that, I'm not really following any people. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, you know, it's all, it all depends on where the customers are. Like even Twitter could work for someone if their audience is on there or like YouTube ads or even Facebook ads. So yeah, it's great that you found a place that actually works. In terms of like the sales reps, because I think at one point you told me you had like 50 or 70 sales reps. So I'm just trying to understand like how, how does that even work economically? Like are they, because yeah, because 150K you had one guy, but then how much you're making now? Like how many guys do you have and how did I kind of play out in terms of hiring them? Yeah. So year today we're at, I think, uh, about 14 million. Uh, our, our highest month was 2.3 in January. And then we kind of, we like plateaued there and then it's kind of been like 1.5, 1.7, 1.2, but our average this year is about 1.5. Um, 
And we went from, I don't know, like maybe 10 people or 15 people in like November of 2021 to like a hundred people in, 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 in uh, February or March of 2022. And like 70 of them were sales reps. Anyone watching this, if you're an entrepreneur, don't fucking do this. Never do that in your life ever. Uh, we needed like another, because our, our lead flow literally went from like 40 calls a day to like 120 calls a day, literally overnight. I mean, like literally overnight, right? And, um, and then we realized like, holy shit, we need a lot more people on the phone. And so we realized that 15 is not going to do it. I think the number was like 55 or 65 or something that, you know, based on the numbers. And so we went and hired literally that many in like two months, right? You never want to do that, especially when you're a, a young company. Like for us, we were like a year and a half, two years in business. We had no systems. We had no structure. We had no accountability. We had nothing. You know, we were just kind of like growing as we go and building as we go. And so what happened is it created a lot of turbulence. Luckily, we have an incredible culture. Out of the 150 people that have come and gone through our company in the last year or two, every single one of them agrees on one thing, and that is you guys have better culture than anything that I've ever seen in my life, right? We have, we have people that have worked for Fortune 500 companies, and they say that we have better culture than any other company they've worked for. And so luckily, having that on our side um, kept the company from like literally blowing up, like literally it could have blown up. Um, and so what we did is we realized, okay, we have too many people on team. We started contracting right now. We have 30, um, 37 or 38 reps, which is still a pretty massive team, um, out of 70. So we've literally chopped it in half, but it's still triple the size or quadruple the size where it was a year ago. Right. Um, so to answer your question, that's kind of what we went through over six months. For our plans, the next quarter is just stabilizing the company, is just building foundation. We just you know, uh, built new softwares, uh, uh, bringing mid-management uh, into the, the company um, and, and investing in, in kind of infrastructure so that way now we can scale to nine figures and beyond. Awesome. So... So did you use like an agency to hire the reps or was it like, or were they all like in-house? Um, so I don't, I don't want to put, put, put names out there, but there was a, a, a company uh, that kind of, um, that was very big that uh, wasn't doing very well. Uh, everyone watching knows who that company is and who, the, who that person is. Uh, they weren't, they were in the sales, uh, sell, they were teaching people how to do sales they went kind of sideways and they changed their market and they changed how they do business. So a lot of their reps left. A lot, a lot of people in their company started leaving. And a lot of our early on salespeople came from that company, that training. And so they, we, they just started kind of pulling others that, that they worked with that they knew that they would do better here because that company just kind of was, uh, was not doing well anymore. And, and so in the beginning it was referral and then we've used a few different referrals um, as well, we've used Cole Gordon uh, with uh, Close.io or Close, close dot something, uh, Closers.io, I think it is. Uh, we've used another company called um, Closer something. I forget what it was called. And they both did very well. But honestly, it was mostly referrals. Once you have one or two or three reps, um, they will start referring others because usually salespeople all hang out together, all know each other. Um, but in the very beginning, like our very first few were like just being active in groups, being active in, 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 um, in like sales, sales reps groups and things like that. And that's what really helped us scale the, the sales team. Awesome. Um, and then the guys that you have now, like, are they, cause you've got 40 guys of me 38, but, um, are they, are they all doing like 10 calls a day or are they like five or some part time or are they all like full time 10 a day? So um, sometimes um, our, our leadership team uh, refers to me as Jesus. And uh, the reason why they do that is because um, our core principles, number one and number two core values is focus and kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. And so we have this thing. I, I always tell everyone that joins the company, I don't care what you're doing in your life. I need you to drop it and follow us, literally. Um, so we don't have part-time, we don't have people that are bouncing between account to account. 
um, you're either going to work full time here or I don't want you. And that's all departments all across the company. I don't have um, like we don't have everyone is a contractor, but they're all full time. They're all this is the only commitment they have. Some are transitioning because they got hired, let's say, a week or two ago. That's fine. You get 60 days to transition. Totally cool. But I don't want you working for someone else. And now it's my responsibility to provide you with the best opportunity inside of our company than anything else that you could do outside of our company. Um, you know, you can't ask someone to, to give up everything and then join your company and you're not going to provide them an opportunity because at the end of the day, we're all opportunists and we want, you know, the best for ourselves and our families. So. Okay. Awesome. So essentially you have like an engine right now, which is like you, an engine, that, an ads engine that you pretty much have lots of control over versus like Facebook, which can just ban you overnight. And you have your Instagram page, link in bio, 40 reps. So all of the calls are essentially coming from Instagram. Um, so like how many calls would, would you would you like typically like generate per month that will like result in eight figures in sales? Um, about anywhere between 26 to 2,900 or so. Um, Cause we get about on average, um, Right now, we're averaging almost 95 to 100 per day. Okay. Yeah, so like yesterday, I'm looking at the reports right now. Yesterday, we got 88 calls. But then the day before, we got 123 calls. The day before that, 122 calls. The day before that, uh, we got 92 calls. You know, So I think our average is about like 90 or so. Wow, yeah. That, that's an amazing ratio because you have 40 reps and then... So they're all getting total like 20, you know, per per day. But obviously, I'm guessing all of them probably qualified. But even then, that's still an amazing ratio per rep. Yeah. So on average, on a 30 day, um, on a 30 day, um, like uh, like time frame, <clears throat> each rep gets about 4.3 calls per day. But that's on a 30 day, right? Not not all reps. Well, no one works 30 days, right? Most of them work about five days or something like that. So when they open their calendars on a, on a, on a, let's say if you're working five days, you're getting anywhere between five to seven calls booked on your calendar every day. Uh, that's what we try to kind of keep it at. Obviously we have the overachievers that sometimes get 10 calls a day, uh, but usually that's not sustainable over a long period of time. And you don't want to promote it too heavily unless you have to, you know, like sometimes if let's say we'll have an event, uh, I'm trying, you know, I'm doing, um, uh, we're working on, some uh, promotions with like Ty Lopez, Dan Locke, these guys. And, uh, and so they'll send like a ton of traffic our way for like a month or two. That month or two, it's like, hey, everyone open up. Don't go to sleep, just take calls, you know? All right, awesome. Um, so you mentioned you want to grow this to nine figures. How does that work? You also mentioned something about softwares. Um, I don't know how much you can share about that, but like what's, what's kind of the idea to go, to go there? Yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, when I first opened up um, our company, like we see ourselves as a platform, as a, as a university. We want to be the Stanford, the Harvard, and the Yale of online education. Um, and so to do that, you know, we started with Amazon because, you know, I was a successful Amazon seller and it just made sense. But the, um, the, the goal is that we want to offer people different skills in different, um, in different areas of life, Right kind of the front end, it's going to be how to make money. Because when you, when you talk to someone that is in debt, you know, like if you were to talk to me seven years ago, I had just lost my restaurant. I was $500,000 in the hole. Uh, my credit was shot. I had two, you know, cars repossessed on my credit. I couldn't get a loan. I couldn't get apply for a credit card. I couldn't do shit. Right. Um, I had no money in the bank. I was dishwashing for Hilton hotels and I was driving for Uber. If you came to me and said, Hey bro, um, if you want to change your life, you need to work on your mindset and you need to change how you think and stuff like that. I would have told you to go fuck yourself, right? But if you came to me and said, hey, bro, I can help you how to make five grand a month, I'd be like, hell yeah, let's do it, right? And if I told you that you could do it on your laptop from anywhere in the world and you wouldn't have a boss, you would be able to create your own schedule. If you want to sleep in, you know, until 11 o'clock in the morning, you could do that, you know? If you want to work until two o'clock in the morning, you could also do that. I'd be like, hell yeah, let's do that, right? And so I want to be able to meet people where they are. And my, like the people that I'm passionate about is Bashar seven years ago 
which is the everyday person, the person that's beat up, the person that's been told by society that like they that's all they have, you know, like their current situation is all they're going to have all of their lives. You know, the millionaires and the billionaires of the world are possible. You could be a, a millionaire. You could be a, other people could be millionaires. Other people could be billionaires. Just not you. That's just not something that's going to happen in your life. And I want to be able to give them hand up. Right. And so not everyone is going to resonate with Amazon. Not everyone wants to be an e-commerce, you know, an e-commerce. Um, so we want to, our goal in the future is to find micro influencers that are in other niches. It could be crypto, could be real estate investing, could be stock trading, could be sales training, could be whatever. And then bring those as skills under our university, right? Just like you go to a traditional university, you learn, you could get a bachelor's in engineering, you could get a bachelor's in economics and, and whatever, you know, it's the same thing. Uh, but for us, and instead of, you know, with traditional education, you'll spend tens of thousands, waste years of your life and get a degree that might or might not get you a job. With us, you'll be learning a specific skill that you can turn into income within 90 days or less, right? That's our goal. And then after, once we have, let's say, four or five of those different verticals, then in the back end, then I want to meet that person once they're making five, 10 grand a day, uh, a month and say, hey, now your financial situation is fixed, but life isn't all about finances. You know, having success in life doesn't mean a whole bunch of money in the bank. It means a bunch of money in the bank, yes, but that's not all. You need to work on your relationships. You need to work on your emotions. You need to work on your you know, higher power, you know, what's your faith look like? Are you spending enough time there? Um, do you have relationships in your, how is your, you know, how is your relationship with your wife, your, your husband, your, your kids and have different retreats, seminars, things like that, kind of like what Tony Robbins does and, and create a, 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 a well-rounded human, right. That has different things and, and, and like has success in all areas of their lives. Right. And uh, this is just something that I realized after making money and after realizing that, okay, I've got a bunch of money in the bank and now what, you know, I've got a shitty relationship with my siblings. I don't have any friends in my life. Like, what am I doing with all this money? And then having all those realizations, but I wouldn't have had all those realizations had I not made money first. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sounds amazing. Um, I'll be, I'll definitely be watching out to see how things progress for BJK. Um, in terms of like the software, you got anything going on with that? Like softwares, are you are you building software or or what's what's going on there? You know, I've always stayed away from building software just because I've realized that it's a completely different animal and I did not understand it. But then I just came to the realization recently is that any big company that you know is built on software or has some type of software built into it, right? And um and then you don't necessarily need to build it yourself. You can just find a a company and either acquire it, partner it up with it, or whatever, right? And so for us, um, right now, like in the Amazon space, I'm looking to find a smaller Amazon tool that I can either acquire or partner up with. And then in every other area or vertical that we go into, um, we're probably thinking of doing the same exact thing, is find a software, um, partner up with them, acquire them, whatever else, and then just have it be part of our ecosystem, you know? Yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it's definitely something um, I'm personally looking into for the future as well. It's like looking at software's already pre-built because, like you said, it's trying to build software is is extremely complicated and difficult, and it is a highly competitive space if you're not built for the for the job. Sure. So, so you, I mean, you've built your company. I mean, many companies now to seven figures. I mean, you had your Amazon business and now this one. So. What have you seen that are some keys to growing just a consulting business, of course, consulting business to seven figures, and then also to eight figures? Because you've seen both sides. So what would you say are, are for each one? Um, I think zero to six figures, you just need to have a product, like a product market fit. You know, if you've got a product that actually works and you have a market that, that wants your product, then you can grow to six figures, multiple six figures. To grow to seven figures, um, you know, you 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 it needs to actually work. You know, the product actually needs to work. Otherwise it won't last very long. You'll probably, you know, hit a few seven figure years and then the word will get out that your product sucks and then no one will buy anymore. And I think this is why you probably see, like when I, when I talk to marketers in our space, 
they talk about offers. You know, they call their products offers. And 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 people say, you know, us marketers, I'm like, I'm not a marketer and neither do I have offers. And this is why you'll see marketers out there or coaches or whatever you want to call them, they bounce from like one thing to another. You know, crypto got hot, everyone went after crypto. Five years ago, Amazon FBA got hot, everyone went in there. Now, as it looks like if you've built a couple of companies, a couple uh, seven-figure coaching businesses, it looks like you can partner up, you know, like Alex Harmozy started that trend and then now a bunch of other people are doing it as well. It's like you start acquiring all these other companies and then kind of, you know, hopefully you can grow them and without them blowing up in your face. And so it's like every few years you see a trend and then you see someone like become very famous, everyone know about them, and then they go away, you know, whether they got into real estate investing or whatever. But I think this is why, because they got into the whole thing for money and money only, and it's my interest above every other person's interest. And I don't give a shit about anyone else. I'm just going to make money as much as I can. And, you know, that's, that's all I'm going to care about. And that only is going to go for so long. But we're trying to build a multi-billion dollar company that's going to be here 150 years from now that's going to be ran by my kids and grandkids. And so in order for you to do that, first, you need to put other people's interest before yours. And that's your team and your end user, right? You can't be thinking of your bottom line first. Because if you do that, that'll only last for so long. If you're always putting other people's interests before yours, you'll be able to grow a big company. So to do that, you need to you need to understand, like you need to have something bigger than yourself. You need to have a bigger, it needs to be about more than just the money that you're making. In our company, we don't talk about how many courses we, we sold or how many people we enrolled. We talk about how many lives we've impacted. We don't talk about, you know, um, yeah, I closed this person. No, I, I helped them, you know, make a, a transition and I helped them make a, a, a transformation in, in their lives. And now we've got an awesome program that's going to help them make that transformation because we do have an incredible program because we believe in it 150%. And that wouldn't have happened had we not put our students' interest before ours, right? Because if I only focused on how can I squeeze every single dollar out of my, my customer, I wouldn't have raving fans. I wouldn't have people that, you know, like if you go to, have you heard of school.com, which is Sam Oven's uh, new platform? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so in school.com, there are 6,000 groups. And according to Sam Ovens, as of last weekend, BJK University is the most engaged group in his entire platform. There's actually a few people in our community that break his algorithm like once a month because they're so engaged, right? And that's because we've built such a solid community that people love each other. People feel like it's a family. It's not just a, an online course that's teaching me how to make money. And that's it. They feel like they're connected. One of our coaches just flew to Dubai to go and meet a bunch of our UAE students, and they had like a party and stuff like that. I was just watching their pictures before I jumped on here. So we've created a community and like a loving family that people really care about each other. So if you want to go to eight figures, I think that's what you need to do. You need to create something that's bigger than yourself. Otherwise, you'll probably like, like smell the eight figures. You'll probably like taste it a little bit for a few months, maybe a year, and then you'll come right down. Like I, I know so many people in our industry that get to about a million, million and a half a month, and then they just get stuck and then realize for them to go above that, now you need to build a real company. Now you're not a, a guru with an offer. Now you're a real company. You need corporate structures. You need COOs and chief of, you know, chief financing officer. And you need all that crazy stuff. And a lot of people just are not willing to do all that. And they're just like, it's not worth it. I'm just going to go and launch another offer and then do it again. You know, go to seven, eight figures and then go launch another thing and then do that. And then, you know, get my get my brand and name like, you know, in the ground for like a year or two, rebuild it again, go under a new company or a new name and then rebuild it and then just keep doing that. And that's why you see people just like jumping up and down every couple of years. Yeah, I've, I think we've both seen that. Yeah, we've seen that happening over the past five years. People. I guess with, with, I guess what you're doing exact, which is exactly how it's supposed to be done, is actually building something you would do even if money was put aside. Right. Um, obviously, money is important, but there's, there's, like you said, there's got to be a bigger reason to it so that you can still do it even when you've hit, um, when you've made enough money to kind of not have to think about it anymore. Like yeah. You, now I mean, got, our, our yeah. company, our company has already profited multiple seven figures this year. Uh, profits, not not revenue. 
Last month, however, we lost $125,000. And I woke up more excited than ever because I'm not focused on today, on tomorrow, on next week. I'm focused on 20, 30 years from now. And I know we're building something so incredible and so awesome that I believe in that it's like, yeah, sure, the company didn't make a profit and it lost money. Who gives a shit, right? Let's keep going. Uh, and so you need to be convinced that it's more than it's about more than the money. It's about the impact. It's about other people's interest. And that your paycheck is just a byproduct. You need to pass that message down to your team and they need to believe in it. And they need to be convinced, not that, oh, that's just what the founder says. And then also the customer needs to believe in that. Like whenever we post, uh, uh, we make a post in our community asking people like, hey, we're hiring for this position. Their messages are always like, yeah, hell yeah. I want to be part of you, you know, part of your team to impact a million lives as well. You know? And so that, that message has been ingrained in me, in the team, in the community, just throughout the entire company. Um, and so you, you need to believe it, not just like say it just because it's cool to say it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's got to be a real thing. Absolutely. So, yeah, because you, you touched a bit on building the teams and how it's important to like, as you grow, got to have a real corporate structure. Um, what's, what advice do you have to coaches and consultants growing to seven figures on building a team and then beyond that as well? And the importance um, of it. Yeah, honestly, seven figures, man. Um, you know, we skipped the whole, we skipped the whole like section because we literally went from, we li went from like multiple six figures uh, uh, a month to like seven fig multiple seven figures a month in like eight months. You know, so we skipped like a whole a whole level there where I've seen a lot of companies get stuck for like years. You know, I have a friend that was stuck at twenty million dollars a year for like seven years. And then he barely cracked through it like last year. And so um, if you're really enthusiastic about your, about your company, if you really enjoy what you're doing, it's, it won't feel like work, you know? Like a couple things. First, just to understand that this thing can grow, right? Just to understand that like you can grow a multi-eight-figure, multi-nine-figure company. And I think a lot of people in our space don't really believe that because I think it hasn't really been done or at least not that many times. Like, I don't know if there aren't that many nine-figure companies in our space. I know Tony Robbins has a nine-figure company. I don't know if even Grant Cardone is a nine-figure coaching. Like, I know he makes multiple hundreds of millions of dollars a year, but I don't know if his coaching like uh, stuff makes you know more than $100 million a year. So I think because like not a lot of people have done it that a lot of people don't really believe that it's possible. But do believe it is possible, and I will prove that to to anyone watching in a year or two, right? The other thing is, do believe that like we acquire an awesome set of skills that the normal everyday person, like it's kind of our our moral obligation to go out there and really teach it. Like we're teachers, you know, that's what we are. We're teachers. We're educators, right? And so, like when you go to to universities, like. And I know sometimes in my marketing, we like, you know, kind of bash teachers, but sometimes I feel bad for them. But if you think about it, like these guys are not really getting paid a whole lot and they're out there pouring their hearts to people because they believe in what they're doing. They're showing up every day, taking people's bullshit. Like if you are a middle school or a high school teacher, your life is fucking miserable because these kids are ruthless, you know, and these, I mean, especially high school kids, like, I don't even know how you live with that, you know, and your pay is shit. But you're showing up every day because you're like, you know, this is the next generation. I've got a moral obligation to teach these kids something, at least one thing. If they take one thing out of my class, that in the next 10 years that I realize, like, holy shit, thanks, you know, Professor M or whatever for teaching me this thing, it'll probably change their lives. But we have an incredible set of skills that we can deliver a complete transformation. Like someone can go from literally – you know, from racks to riches in like a year, you know, with just, you know, with paying us a few thousand dollars, you know, I mean, you know, we're B2C, so we're a little cheaper than like someone B2B. But even if you're in the B2B space, you know, a lot of our consultants that consult our businesses have contributed so much, so much to our businesses. And if you compare like how much we've paid them to how much value they added to our business, there's no comparison. You know, the, the amount we paid like pales in comparison to how much value they added. 
So we all have this incredible set of skills that if we truly just think about how awesome this set of skills is and just focus on delivering that at the best levels possible, our customers will succeed, we will succeed, and our team will succeed, right? But it can't always be about you. Like you can't always think about how much money am I making? Am I making more money? Am I making less money? Just do believe in like a, the bigger picture. Um, and then you need to have great people, man. Great people make life so much easier. I've operated a business, uh, my restaurant business, where I hated my employees. My employees hated me. I hated my customers. My customers hated me. It was just a shitty situation, you know? Um, but when you create that ecosystem of this, like, loving, of this, like, go-giver environment, your customers love you. Your team loves you. You love them. And, and in turn, when turbulence happens, which turbulence happens in every business, they'll just all keep flourishing and, and, and all keep, like, just driving and, and smashing through walls and coming out to the other side, you know? Yeah, totally with you there. Um, yeah. So I've got two more things I want to touch on. Um, I know you're super busy. So the one, because as you made, like, you know, you started growing your business, hiring more people, obviously you're, you're making all these sales, like you said, hundreds, up to a thousand sales calls a month, even more than that. Um, this is obviously reflected in the back end because now you have to fulfill all those people, you know, making eight, multiple eight figures. How would you like handle the back end as you grew so fast and hired like so many people to sell? and also fulfilling on them? Um, so it started with me wanting to, you know, like after I realized that we're bringing a lot more people uh, into our program, I realized that I can't do the webinars because until now I was still doing the webinars, answering questions, you know, doing the support and everything. And so I just simply went to our community and I looked at the one of, you know, the best, the top students. I offered him a position and I brought him on. Um, and now he's still, he's our head of coaching. So he leads five, um, other coaches. Um, and then we've actually, uh, we've, we've promoted him to be our head of operations. So he manages more than just our coaching team, but all of our coaches are six and seven figure Amazon students or Amazon sellers first. So all of our coaches came through our program, became successful, um, you know, found success with Amazon, and then now are working in the company as Amazon coaches. Awesome, awesome. So, so I'm guessing as soon as you start making more sales, you just started hiring more coaches immediately, and then they just took it from there. Yeah, I mean, the the first person was like, "Hey, man, I just need you to jump on the 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 Facebook group." At the time, we were still in Facebook group and answer questions. And then from there, it's like, "Well, join me on the webinars," and I start taking over some of the webinars. And then we still only have two webinars per week. Now we have seven webinars per week. Uh, because of how many students we have and because of different topics and stuff like that. And we just want to deliver it to our students. And then so he came in, you know, he helped me also build structure for the new, you know, build SOPs for the new, for onboarding the, the next coaches. And then whenever we needed more coaches, we have a little over 5,000 students now. So now we figured uh, that every certain number of students that we enroll, we need a new coach. And so whenever we hit a new number, we just hire a next one. And there's like, there's literally a wait list of, of coaches that want to, that, wait list of students that want to join our company as coaches. And they're, they're all successful Amazon students that we've trained and, and helped succeed. Awesome. Awesome. So, so you're what you reckon at one point, how many coaching calls would that would it be in a week then? Is it going to be like two or three a day or, is, or are you just going to like maximize the value of each seven? Yeah. Well, we, we, st we already have days where we have two calls a day because it's Monday through, through Friday. So two days, it's two calls a day and then three days, one call a day. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, we'll increase as we need to, um, I don't know if we're going to need to, because, you know, a student gets to a certain point where they don't really need your help as much, but we, uh, January of next year, we're thinking of launching a mastermind. So that way we can ascend all those successful students that are now doing good to the mastermind and then kind of build that as well. Um, and once we build that, we'll probably need more coaches to, cause we'll probably graduate two of our like top coaches to the mastermind to take care of that. And we'll need a few other coaches to take care of their their uh, their space. So we'll always have like a, a balance of students here and students there, you know. Awesome. Yeah, I think it definitely. Um, this is obviously a recent thing because I asked you a few times if you had like upsells and things like that, but it seemed like you only had the one thing up until now. I guess when you're launching a mastermind, is that intentional to wait? Um. 
you know, I see a lot of people doing it this way of like front end, back end mastermind, because that's what everyone else says to do. And for the longest time, I just didn't see, like the only thing that I was afraid of is if I launch a more expensive program, I might be holding back on the front end because I want to implement those things in the back end. And my goal was I just want to over deliver the heck out of our students. Like they pay $4,800 for a program. I wanted to give them like $15,000 worth of, worth of value, right? And I felt if I launch a 10 or 15 or $20,000 a year mastermind, then I'll be holding back on the $4,800 students, right? And I didn't want to do that until I feel like now that like we've exceeded over delivering and it's like, yeah, it's just stupid at this point. You know, it's like, dude, we're just like giving money away left and right. It doesn't make any sense anymore. And we've also had a bunch of students ask like, what's next? I want the next level. Because our coaches are seven-figure sellers, um, multiple seven-figure sellers, and then they're doing other extra things that we don't necessarily teach our students because a lot of our students are beginners. And I don't want to overwhelm our students by like adding you know, advanced stuff to the main program because we would be overwhelming the beginner students. So it just makes sense to like, it's kind of like, you know, now they have an associate's degree, now there's a bachelor's degree, and then there might be a doctorate degree later or something like that, you know? All right, amazing. Yeah, I, I love that philosophy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just giving as much as possible away in the initial one. And then I guess when it makes sense and people ask for it, you go up to the next one. And this is something I would, I already, we already spoke about um, a while ago, which is about like taxes and kind of like the lifestyle. And you, know, you mentioned you moved to, I believe, was it Florida to lower it? But then from your, maybe you can tell everyone what your recommendation was on taxes and lifestyle. So 2021, I went into 20, yeah, early 2021, I realized that I was going to have a massive, um, cause the cool thing with it, with an Amazon business is that a lot of your money is stuck in inventory. So it's really easy to like dump money back into the business and just buy a shitload of inventory, especially if you have like uh, like a warehouse to store things. So I never really had massive tax bills. It was, you know, it was six figures and stuff like that for, for a few years. But then once the consulting business started uh, scaling, I realized now I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be getting close to like a seven figure, multiple seven figure tax bill because it's very, you know, it's cash, cash flow positive. There's no inventory, you know, it's, it's obviously you're spending on, on your team and all that stuff, but it's pretty cash flow positive. And, um, and so for about seven, eight months, I went into this, like this research and I spent like 80 to a hundred grand of talking to all kinds of, um, all kinds of, um, uh, 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 like tax strategists and CPAs and tax attorneys and, and you need to do this product and that product and people telling me about all these different trusts. And I mean, you've probably heard about them, you know, the, the something sandwich and the Costa Rica thing and people tell me to move to Dubai and all that stuff. And it all sounded pretty cool, but I just felt like I was being overwhelmed more and more. And then what I realized was that I was like, I started entrepreneurship because I wanted financial and time freedom, right? And then now, once I started making money, now I was almost burdened by the money that I was making. Everyone was like, hey, man, invested in, in real estate, you'll get depreciation. And those that are watching, if you are passionate about real estate, if that's your thing, do it. Because yes, you get a ton of depreciation. It's an appreciating asset. It's a cash flowing asset. It's an awesome investment. But for me, that's not my passion. I just, I tried many times. It's just not my thing. And I realized that I was spending 10, 15 hours per week investigating about new ways to save taxes, about strategies, vehicles. And I realized that wasn't like every time I would get on a call to like save taxes with someone, I would be dreading the call. Like I would be so drained, it would drain my energy. It was just a topic I did not enjoy. And then I realized, what if I take all this time that I'm investing in these calls and this research and put it back into my business that's growing 20, 30, 40% month over month? Once I did that, I realized that I'm going to be making a lot more money than the tax that I'd be paying. And at the end of the day, who gives a shit? If I make $5 million in the bank or if I make $4 million, my lifestyle is not going to change. I still live on about eight, dollars $9,000 a month in total expenses. That's my car, rent, insurance, I mean everything, going out, all that stuff, travels, everything. I don't spend more than seven, dollars $8,000 a month um, on my lifestyle. I still wear $30 shirts. I'm wearing a $100 watch. You know, that's just, that's just me. 
And so if I make an extra million or if I don't, it's really not going to change anything. But what it's going to change is that all that time, I'm going to invest it back into my business, which I'm passionate about, which is the thing that drives me, which is the thing that wakes me up every single morning, excited as heck to go to work and actually make something happen. And so I just realized that, you know what? I just literally, I, I remember one day I was so frustrated. I emailed all the CPAs. It was, there was like 10 of them. I copy pasted the same email to like 10 different people. And I said, hey, thanks for, your, thanks for everything. Please send me an invoice for all the work that you've done for me. But I'm just going to decide that I decided that I'm going to just pay the tax bill and call it a day. I don't need anything. I'm doing the same thing this year. My CPA got a little creative to save me a few, you know, a few thousand dollars here and there. Nothing crazy. It'll be a bigger tax bill than last year. But, um, you know, in 10 years, I might look back and say that was dumb. You know, I could have saved a few million dollars and invested them somewhere. But today where I am, it doesn't bother me and it doesn't make a difference in my life. Um, and I'm 32 years old. I don't plan on dying tomorrow. My business isn't going out of business tomorrow. I plan on living until I'm at least 95, 100. My business, I plan that it's going to grow beyond me. And so for me, it's like, if I, you know, if in a couple of years from now, I realize that there is another tax strategy that I could have done and, you know, two years that I pay taxes isn't really going to change anything. Awesome. Yeah. I, um, I like the thought process. Yeah. That's exactly what you said. Um, which is, you know, you got in this to have financial freedom and now, you know, you're kind of sacrificing the freedom to now uh, prioritize money. So yeah, it's, it's amazing what you've done. And obviously you're, you're back in Miami. So you, you moved back from, so you went to Florida, I'm guessing, and then you came back to your city. No, so so Miami is in Florida. Uh, I used to be in San oh. Diego, California. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, this is what happens when you don't live in the U.S. It's all good. No. It's all good. No, no, no one, no, no one will um, will say anything about this, but it's all good. Um, so I used to live in San Diego, California. I moved across country to Miami, Florida, and um, and I didn't do it for taxes. Like taxes was like reason number five or six, but it was more of a. Um, was more of a, a lifestyle change because I wanted a place where I knew nobody, where I wanted to like challenge myself because I had lived in San Diego for like 14, 15 years. Everyone there I knew. My, you know, I, my life was, was like pretty staggering. My business was pretty staggering and I actually wanted to like make a change in my life. And so I came to Miami because I literally, I did not know anyone. And, uh, and I wanted to, to pretty much just challenge myself and get out of my comfort zone, you know? All right, yeah, dude. I'm I'm in the UK, so we have I have no idea. I thought you don't know. Which, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Florida. It's all I've good. Actually, it's all I've good. actually I've actually been to America once. Um, I went to Florida, and what w- what's the city where the Disney World is? Well, that's Florida, actually. So, well, there is there is two. There's one in California, in Los Angeles, and then there is one in um, sorry. And then there is one in uh, um, in Florida, Orlando, Florida. That's that's the one I've been to, Orlando. Yeah, Orlando. Okay. Oh. All right. Okay, so so Miami is in Florida as well, right? Yeah. So okay. um, Orlando is four hours north of here. Okay. So yeah. so you went in San Diego, and then you went to Miami in Florida, and then you, now you're going back to San Diego. No, no, I'm still I'm still in Miami. Okay, you're still in Miami. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so does that still have have the benefits of? I think because because Florida is much lower in taxes. From what you said. So yeah, so in America there is federal tax and there is uh, there is state tax. The federal tax is the same across country, but the state tax in California was between eleven to thirteen percent, depends on how much you earn. In Florida there is no state tax, so I'm saving about eleven percent per year uh, living here, which is pretty awesome. You know, we're talking about a couple hundred thousand, which is great okay yeah and f- from what i've seen is um like miami is like a nice place to be anyway it's um the thing that i love about here is that everyone is very entrepreneurial it's a very like up and coming city and everyone that's here is like they want to do something with their lives and so you'll see a lot of people that are just like wanting to crush it and great 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 connections here for sure yeah yeah that's amazing. Sounds like you're on uh, in a very good spot. Um, 
All right, then. I think we've we've kind of covered a lot of stuff today. Um, hopefully, everyone watches enjoys the whole interview today with Bashar Katu. His entire story, he shared so much value, and and yeah, and you know, he has his own YouTube channel, has his Instagram, all under Bashar Katu or BJK. So you can follow him there. Is there anything else you want to add on for people to find you or where they can work with you, perhaps? Yeah, so I mean, if you're, um, you know, if you're wanting to to learn how to sell on Amazon, you can go to Bashar JK2 on Instagram and learn more, or on YouTube, BJK University. Um, but uh, I don't work with uh, like B two B. I don't, you know, help consultants or anything, anything, anything like that. It's not something that I'm that I'm into right now. Uh, but I would love to get on a podcast if someone has a podcast that wants to bring me on. Please reach out. I'll be more than happy to do that. Uh, but outside of that, just really those that are watching, just to understand that, as I mentioned earlier, you can grow this to a multi-eight-figure, multi-nine-figure business, and you do possess an incredible, you know, skill set that people really need. And so, if you really just focus on that, if you just focus on delivering the value to your customers, you will live a happy life. Your customers will live a happy life. You'll have an incredible team that believes in you, that loves you, and that just wants you to grow because. As you grow, they grow, and um, and when you go, there will be an awesome legacy that you've left behind. Because really, that's the only thing that uh, people remember about you. They won't remember how much money you've made, or they won't remember you know the company you grew. They'll remember the impact that you made. You know the 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 evolution that you've created in the world, and uh, that's kind of what I'm working on personally. Awesome, Bashar. Thanks for coming on today. I really appreciate it. And thanks, man. Appreciate you. See you soon. All right. Very good.